prevention and resiliency training with compassion fatigue, and I've, I've been doing that for almost a decade. And to start that training out, um, every time I do it, what I do is I pass out index cards to the audience, and I, have, I ask the, the members of the audience to write down three ways in which they have been negatively affected by their work. And I give them a couple of minutes to do that. And once everybody's written that down, I then ask them kind of, um, don't give them much of a chance to think about it. I say, okay, now what I want everybody to do is to take your card and hold it here at about chin height. And I want you to meander around the room and let others bear witness to what you've written on your card. And you bear witness to what others have written on their card. And you see this kind of stricken look of horror on people's faces because they're, they're pretty frightened about letting other people see what they've, a lot of, not everybody, but a lot of people are pretty, uh, pretty horrified about letting other people see what they've written on their cards. And I do this as a way of normalizing the, um, the effects of compassion fatigue. And so folks get up and they start walking around and you see them kind of skittish and, and, and uh, tentative at first, but after a couple of minutes of doing that, you see people kind of walking around doing this, bobbing their head and reading other people's cards and really, um, really having a sense of cohesion and understanding and there's a real, um, a palpable feeling in the room of relaxation and, um, and unity. And then after that's all done, I have everybody kind of sit back down and I say, okay, there were multiple purposes in this exercise. Can you, t and, and to just uh, give proper citation for that exercise, it's from, uh, from uh, Karen Sokvitney and Laurie Perlman's uh, work with Risking Connection, a curriculum for treating, uh, for, for working with professionals on treating um, childhood sexual abuse. And I, I stole that from them, and it's a great technique. Um, so after everybody kind of sits down and um, I ask, let's talk a little bit about what that exercise was about. And you get, um, what I get is people starting to say about how they, um, they it was validating, how they didn't feel alone anymore. And what I start telling, start talking about is how that um, we are at the end of uh, a 3,000 year old, maybe not that old, well, probably near, a very old paradigm that doesn't work, uh, going all the way back to Hippocrates, is the idea that the way that um, a health practitioner, a caregiver, stays resilient is, and, and, and prevents themselves from being infected by their patient's illness is by being objective, standoffish, and stoic. And um, what we've kind of learned over the past couple of decades is that that doesn't work. And I, I point to, to the audience and I say, how many blank cards did, it, did you guys see while we were doing that exercise? And, and usually, within a, in just about every group that I do, nobody has a blank card. Everybody has some negative effects from this work. And that's, I've done that with over 100,000 people. And all, all of those people have had some type of deleterious effects from their work of being a professional caregiver. And, and I say, well, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? That, that we've all been affected. So that either means that we're all twisted and sick and, and weak and pathological, or there's something about this work that produces negative effects. And so that's where I wanna start, is that there is no way to do professional caregiving without it having some negative impacts on our lives. Everybody has some pain from this work. Everybody has some negative effects. <clears throat> and what, what we've kind of been left with with the paradigm is the idea that we're not supposed to have any effects from our work. And what happens is that when we do start having these effects, because we've bought into this paradigm of objectivity is the way that we stay healthy, and when that starts failing, what is the most logical and natural thing that, that caregivers do intuitively is that we start to um, repress and isolate and shut down all that so that other people can't see it, so that we don't become judged by our peers as being inadequate or um, 
uh, incapable of being a, a good professional caregiver. And we have this, there's this natural built-in denial and suppression and repression system that goes with the symptoms of compassion fatigue to where um, it's really hard to see the effects in our own lives. Usually for a lot of people, it takes somebody confronting them before they start seeing the effects in their own lives. And I think that that, I've kind of come to the understanding that I think that's, that is a function of the bad paradigm that we're in. And, um, you know, I want to hearken back to uh, Henry Nowen's work of the wounded healer and to just start out with the understanding that all of us are wounded healers that every single one of us who do this work for any period of time have some negative effects and we end up becoming scarred by our work. Now what's, <clears throat> what's nice is as we continue our development and we continue our maturation, we can go along and have great, big, full, wonderful lives and not be diminished by the effects, not have um, a lessening of quality of life and be able to develop the resiliency that we can li live productive, happy, healthy lives, uh, being full of love and joy and, and productivity, even while we're being confronted with the, with the negative effects from our work.